Okay, so I laughed at the name Claude back before it was even in beta, so nobody knew what it looked like. But today I tried Claude and I'm not laughing anymore. In fact, I ran just a few prompts and I immediately cancelled my ChatGPT subscription. And yes, I'm going to show you those prompts because I recorded myself using Claude for the first time. But first, let me say that I'm not giving too rash decisions. Hello? What? It's raining? Sell the company! As I was saying, I don't usually overreact. I'm sorry, I left my lie detector on. Okay, so I may have overreacted maybe once or twice. I tell you what, I'll let you watch the video and you decide whether I was too quick to cancel my subscription to ChatGPT. This is Claude. I believe it's called Claude 2 now. They always come up with great names in the AI space. When you first log in, you'll see these notices. Feel free to pause the video and read them. Click finish and meet Claude. This is the interface. And note that you have an attachment icon next to the chat button so you can upload a PDF. Isn't that handy? Why didn't OpenAI think of that? And here are three examples to get you started. Summarize this PDF document, help me practice my Spanish vocab, explain how this Python game works. I really like the interface. It's minimalistic, just like ChatGPT. Let me share a secret. One of the key principles of UX design is simplicity. The more things on the screen, the more cognitive load you place on the user's mind. This is why Google was adopted so quickly, because Yahoo looked like pizza vomit. Oh, it still does. ChatGPT also implemented this principle. Now, the adoption for ChatGPT was obviously more about the fact that it was the first AI the public had access to. But if the interface had looked like your last meal, it probably would have put off a lot of people. And it appears that the people behind Claude have read the same book and implemented this key principle. So let's start by testing Claude's logic with the 99 murderers trick question. Even I can work this one out. There are 100 killers in a room. A man walks in and murders one of the killers. How many killers are left in the room? There were originally 100 killers in the room. A man walked in and murdered one of the killers. So now there are 99 killers left in the room. Claude, how could you embarrass me like this? This is the first test. So Claude failed the first logic test. Now, if you recall, when I first tested this, ChatGPT 3.5 failed, but ChatGPT 4 got it right. But still, I like the way the output shows me the machine's logic. It's like when you use the act as a model prompt to get the AI to output its logic step by step. And note the way it changed the tense from a man walks to a man walked, as it summarizes the event in the past. Nice touch, Claude. Okay, let's move on. To start a new conversation, just click the logo in the top left. Next prompt. Summarize Think and Grow Rich. Here's a brief summary of the key points in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. The book emphasizes the importance of desire, faith, and persistence in achieving success. Hill asserts that people become what they think about most. The formatting is great, and they nailed the color scheme too. It's nice and easy on the eye. This is turning into a reaction video. Let's continue. Create an actionable list from the above points in table format. This is very cool. Let's continue. Where can I stay in London for less than £100 a night? Premier Inn, major hotel chain with affordable rates starting around £65, £80 per night for basic rooms. Travel Lodge, similar to Premier Inn, another hotel chain with room rates generally between £60, £90 per night. Update the above information to include distance from Euston Station and distance from a McDonald's. The room I want must have Wi-Fi and be non-smoking. Update the above in table format. This is looking very good indeed. What date is it today? Today is July the 23rd, 2023. What were the main news events worldwide yesterday? As an AI assistant without direct access to check news sources, I do not have information about major news events from yesterday or any previous dates. Okay, I haven't read anything about Claude's capabilities or limitations, so I'm just prodding around. Assume the role of Socrates. Do not break character. Respond using everything you know about Socrates to stay consistent. Give me advice on how to prosper in the age of AI. Greetings, friend. This is Socrates. In this age of artificial intelligence, the key to prosperity remains the same. Know thyself. Turn your gaze inwards. Examine your soul. Question your assumptions. That's just like good old Sock. Okay, let's test the PDF thing. I have attached a copy of my Apple Care contract. Summarize it by giving me the pros and cons. 
keep the language simple. Here is a simple summary of the pros and cons of the Apple Care Plus contract. Pros. Covers accidental damage like drops or spills that break your Mac. This is looking good. Remember the prompt where we can give the AI a contract, ask it to summarize it, and then tell us why we should not sign it? Well, it's so much easier when you can upload the contract right there and then. So from what I can see so far from this very small test is that Claude is comparable to ChatGPT 3.5, and it seems to have some better points, like a slightly nicer interface, nice formatting, and the ability to upload a PDF there and then. But the real question is, is Claude really better than ChatGPT? Well, keep your eyes peeled for the next video because I'm about to put Claude to the test to see if it really is better than ChatGPT. I'll see you then.